My last conversation with Joaquin, I will need to bring it to the night before Valentine's Day. We had a basketball game that night, and um, before we came home, he reminded me, hey, I need to get some flowers for my girlfriend. Because we were very close. Me and Joaquin will share almost any information like he will. I will, be, I will need to be his uh, partner for that too. Hey, let's go and get the flowers. All right, let's go and get the flowers. So we went to, um, to get the flowers and uh, we got some little, um, little toy also and a little card so he could write it. And he took the flowers and um, we came here. He was sitting uh, watching TV, some game. Um, he asked me, can you please put them together in a nice way, get rid of the uh, brand name or price and all that. Yeah, sure, I can do that for you. So I did that for him and um, we had a little other conversation. He was, he was, uh, he was ending a um, little book that he was writing for one of his uh, creative writing classes. Um, I was lucky enough to to do the illustrations for him. We worked together on that during the weekend. So we're also talking about that, I remember now. All right, so um, I guess I went to bed. He took a shower and then he, he always stopped by and give us a kiss and good night. See you tomorrow. He said early tomorrow. He said early tomorrow, remember, I gotta be there early with the flowers and everything. Yeah, sure, don't worry. So, I wake up in the morning, uh, hey Enano, that's, I used to call him Enano, since he was very, since he was a kid, but he was taller than me lately, but I still call him Enano, doesn't matter. So Enano wake up, he will wake up, he will, um, he took another shower in the morning because it was Valentine's Day, so he wanted to look really nice, he was a very handsome guy, so he was taking advantage of all that. So um, got the flowers, got everything together, okay, let's go. Coffee. I made a coffee for him. I always used to make coffee so we could bring it in the car. We can have a little conversation in the car. He got the coffee. We were listening to his music. And then we got to the school. So I said, I love you. He said, I love you, Dad. And I asked him, um, call me back so you can let me know what happened with the flowers. I want to know the whole story, remember? He said, yeah, don't worry. I'll call you back. And then I said that I never talked to him again. And it's funny that while we were planning all this the night before for Valentine's Day, for the Friendship Day, with the flowers and the cards and everything, as a family, uh, something that I think about and keeps making this noise in me is that what was happening in that other house at the same time. What, what, I mean, and that's where the value of the family comes into the discussion that we're also having as a nation. Uh, some solutions are at home. We, it's pretty easy to find them. You don't have to look far. You don't have to send letters to senators or, or any congressman to make a decision in your own house. So that's my concept of freedom we were doing the right thing. Someone else wasn't doing the right thing. We were doing the right things since the last 17 years. Someone else wasn't doing the right thing. So at some point, that should be part of the debate too. What is going on in your house? We go from, from small to big, and probably we could fix more things. Manny, where were you when you got the news that something was happening at the school? When I got the news of what happened that day, I was in my office, which is um, 15 minutes away from school. And um, my wife called me. She said, uh, something's happening in the school. She, she works all the way down in Miami, so she, she was, it, it makes sense for her to ask me to, hey, can you just, check it out or because I've heard there's a red code uh, and uh, there's some shotgun issue happening in the school. 
So yeah, immediately I called, started calling Joaquin. He didn't answer. And I called again and again and again. I'm, uh, at this point, I'm already in my car driving to school. And at some point, you can already see the um, helicopters over the school. So now you know it's a big deal, right? And then I start calling his friends, and they start answering. Um, so I, we have a group, because I'm, I'm, I'm the basketball coach for these kids, some of his friends go to the same school. So I text them, where's, where's Joaquin? Well, I don't know, he's on the other side. Nobody will give me a, a right answer. These kids were all running around crazy. They were moving them to outside of, running outside of the school. So I, I, I thought that um, probably he lost his phone. He said, well, maybe he's running and he dropped his phone and he's not gonna answer it. Finally, Patricia and me were together. It, so this is like an hour after what I'm telling you. Um, we had no access to the school. We were away from school. And they told us to go to uh, the Marriott Hotel because everything was going to be centralized from the Marriott Hotel. A anything by meaning kids will be bring from school to the Marriott. Uh, the um, Red Cross would be there uh, giving information. The FBI would be there giving information. All that was going to happen there. So we ended up at the Marriott Hotel. And um, you, you start seeing kids that you know, Joaquin's friends. Some of his friends saw him, but there's another thing that happens. We all want to see Joaquin. So you start getting texts like, uh, I saw him, he's in the Marriott. But you know these kids, they pretty much look all the same, all right? Um, so yeah, and I saw him uh, running through the hall. So I was crazy because at some point you, you, you need a real answer. And if you start listening to everyone that has saw Joaquin or thinks that he was in a specific place, you just, and you still don't see him, you, you, you start freaking out. And then at some point you don't see any more kids. So now you're hoping you're not hoping anymore that the phone is not with him. Now you're hoping that he's in a hospital. Who prays for that? Where are you? In which moment of your life are you that you need to pray that your kid is in a hospital with a bullet inside his body? That's, that's, that's a hard moment to go through. So your, your prayers are changing they get a little deeper, harder. You pray for, for more, you, get, you start losing hope, but gaining faith, like, because it's the only option that you got. But now you know he's not in a hospital, because he can, because we know he's not in a hospital, so what happened? And, and, and at that moment you realize, you still don't know the news, but you realize, and this, that's probably the strongest part, is you realize that something really wrong happened to your son. And how much time went until you, you saw him again? Uh, two days, or one day, let me think. Uh, this happened on Wednesday, two days, two days. That way I saw him again. Dead. Joaquin was a leader his whole life. I, I will need to add he was an activist leader. He, he, he fought for everything and he, everything was a, like a challenge for him. He, that day, once you go through all that pain, they will never leave my heart or my wife's heart, or my daughter's heart. It's gonna be there forever. That leader holds a torch and gives it to you and says, hey, this was unfair. 
I was giving flowers to my girlfriend in my school, which is supposed to be the safest place. See, like, this is where you send me. This is where we send our kids. Hey, go to school. Don't go to anywhere that might be dangerous. Just go to school. We demand them to go to school all our lives. So Joaquin, that day gave me that torch. Listen, this was unfair, but I'm thinking that we can fix it. So now I got that torch. And I'm a father and I will be a father to the day that I die. So now I gotta keep that flame burning and do something with it. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna stay here, do nothing or be sad or be only sad. I wish I could change being sad to something else. No, I, but anything that I'll do, I need to add it to being sad. So our life turned into a mission, okay? That is so powerful that it makes us think that the mission is way bigger than the moment. And there are many Joaquins out there, thousands, millions of Joaquins that need to go to school while we're talking. They need to go tomorrow, they need to know next weekend. And younger people than Joaquin that will need to keep on going to school. So it's almost a must do this. It's not a choice. It's not even a choice. I have to, my life is turning into this. Is it gonna help me heal the uh, loss of my son, not being able to hang out with him and go to baseball games and stuff? Probably not. I'm sure it's, it won't. But it will give us the satisfaction of, hey, we're helping other kids so other parents don't have to go through this. And we're, most important than that, we're following his lead. We're, we're keeping that torch where he wanted it to be holding it very high, lighting every single kid so they can see better what's going on and probably take the lead at some point and make the right decisions for our leaders. Mm -hmm.